welcome. Today I'm very happy and privileged to, to be the messenger. And as we are reading the passage, I was like, wow. <laughs> so I, whenever I read about Jesus, I see love, his love for me and you. So may this, today's message again show us Jesus' love through his resurrection. Our today's message is entitled, Blessed are those who have believed. Again, blessed are those who have believed. Our key verse is verse 29. Can we read verse 29? John chapter 20, verse 29. Can we read it all together? And then Jesus told him, Because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen me yet have believed. Again. Then Jesus told him, Because you have seen me, you have believed. John's Gospel, like the other three Gospels, concludes Jesus, with Jesus' resurrection. Along with Jesus' death for our sins, his resurrection is a pillar of the Christian faith. In fact, it is, a belief, it is believing the risen Jesus that gives us the power to live a new life. If our faith in the risen Jesus is weak, we can easily succumb to the enemies of death. Sorrow, fear, and doubt overpower our hearts. We become weak and towards sin and vulnerable to temptation. The demands of daily life easily overwhelm us and we lose sight of God's mission and great vision. But when we have faith in the risen Jesus, we become strong. We can live a truly blessed life. Amen. As we approach the end of John's Gospel, may the risen Jesus plant resurrection faith in our hearts. Again, as we approach the end of John's Gospel, may the risen Jesus plant resurrection faith in our hearts. Amen. Jesus' resurrection account is unique and contains many details not found in other disciples. It is because John was there. He testifies that Jesus rose from the dead based on the facts and eyewitness accounts. John begins with the empty tomb. Then he tells how the risen Jesus appeared on three separate occasions. To Mary, to all the disciples except Thomas and to Thomas. He testifies to us so that we may believe in Jesus and have life in his name. Amen. Let's re listen to his resurrection account. First, John saw the facts and believed. Verses 1 through 10. John opens with the mention of Mary Magdalene going to the tomb. It had only been a matter of hours since she had stood beneath the cross and witnessed Jesus' death. She had seen Jesus' cold body being buried and heard the sound of the heavy stone roll into place to cover the tomb. Then she had to go home for the Sabbath. Her heart was broken completely. Jesus was her Lord. Jesus had set her free from the devil's power. Jesus was so loving, understanding, gentle, and kind. Jesus was everything to her. She did not know why good Jesus had to be crucified. She could not stop crying. As soon as the Sabbath was over, 
early on the first day of the week. She went to the tomb to anoint Jesus' body with spices. She realized that she could not move the stone, but she went out of love for Jesus. When she arrived, she saw that the stone had been removed from the entrance. Surprised, she assumed that Jesus' enemies had taken his body out of the tomb. She felt helpless and became anxious and desperate. So she came running to Peter and John and said, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb and we don't know where they have put him. According to verse 2, Peter and John ran to the tomb. John outran Peter and reached the tomb first. Maybe John was younger than Peter, so he could outrun him the first. John bent over and looked at the strips of the linen lying there but did not go in. He was overly conscious and timid. Although Peter arrived later, he went straight into the tomb. <laughs> Simon Peter saw the strips of lightning dying there, as well as the cloth had been wrapped around Jesus' head. The cloth was still lying in its place, separate from the living, according to verse 7. Finally, John also went inside the tomb and saw the linen and cloth. It seemed that Jesus' body had simply vanished. If it had been taken by the enemies, the sea would not be so ordinary and neat. John saw the tomb empty tomb and believed. He believed that Jesus had risen. Amen. The tomb could not contain Jesus' body because Jesus is the author of life. God raised him from the dead, freeing him from agony of death, because it was impossible for death to keep its hold on him, according to Acts chapter 2, verse 24. Jesus' resurrection was prophesied in the scripture. Now it was fulfilled. Yet Peter and John did not understand this. Yet they simply witnessed Event. Then they went back to where they were staying. Why does John tell us about this event in such detail? He wants us to realize that he was the eyewitness to Jesus' resurrection. He testifies that Jesus' tomb is empty because Jesus raised Christian faith relies on the testimony of John and all the apostles of this sure historical fact. Not only they, but numerous people in history have testified that Jesus is risen. For example, Lee Strobel was an award-winning journalist for the Chicago Tribune. When his wife became a Christian through Bible study, he wanted to disapprove the Christian faith to win her back to the atheist position. So he began to investigate Christianity. As he did so, he was so overwhelmed by the evidence of Christ's resurrection, and he concluded that it was true. He became a Christian and has testified to Jesus' resurrection around the world. Amen. Nebel Keresh was a devout Muslim, the grandson of Muslim missionaries. While in medical school, he met a Christian named David Wood and began to debate about the truth of Christian faith. After three years, Nebel was firmly convinced by the evidence that Christ had risen from the dead and Christianity was true. By the help of the Holy Spirit, 
accepted Jesus as his Savior, though it meant being sown by his family. After that, he testified to the resurrection of Christ and led many people to faith until he went to be with the Lord about two years ago. Why is it so important for us to believe the historical facts of Jesus' resurrection? What do you think is important for us to believe? Let's see. These days, many think that everyone has their own truth based on their experiences, opinions, and feelings. They tend to interpret reality from their own perspective, claiming there is no absolute truth. We are bombarded daily with fake news, false reports, and lies. Sometimes we feel that it is impossible to know what is really going on. But it is true that Jesus has raised, has risen. This is a historical fact and the truth. Again, Jesus has risen. And this is a historical fact and the truth. Soon every knee will bow before the risen Jesus, and every tongue confess that he is the Lord. This truth is the same for everyone, in every nation and generation. We can believe it absolutely and put our full trust in Jesus. Again, we can believe this truth absolutely and put our full trust in Jesus. Second, Jesus appeared to Mary, his disciples, and Thomas. Verses 11 through 28. Now John introduces the witnesses, beginning with Mary Magdalene. After Peter and John departed, Mary remained outside the tomb, crying. The word crying used here means lament. She loved Jesus wholeheartedly, so her tears flowed from the bottom of her heart. As she wept, she bent over and looked into the tomb. She saw two angels in white, sitting where Jesus' body had been, one at the head and the other at the foot. The presence and position of these angels, ready to serve Jesus and reveal who Jesus is, Jesus is the king of heaven, angel armies ready to obey him. He had left two angels behind to guard the empty tomb so the witnesses would see it. However, their surprising appearance did not slow the flow of Mary's tears. They asked her, Woman, why are you crying? They asked her, Woman, why are you crying? She said, They have taken away my Lord, and I don't know where they have put him. At this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not realize that it was Jesus. Her deep sorrow had blinded her. Her mind was fixed upon the dead body of Jesus. Indeed, the power of death had overcome. Jesus asked her, Woman, why are you crying? Who is it you are looking for? It meant there is no reason for you to cry. I have defeated the devil, the power of death, by my resurrection. Amen. She thought he was the gardener and said, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have put him and I will get him. But could, what could pierce through her sorrow and help her see Jesus? Jesus said to her, Mary, <clears throat> she cried out in her mind, Rabboni, my beloved teacher. Jesus' tender personal greeting had opened her spiritual eyes. 
she saw that Jesus was alive. She was so happy and old to see the risen Jesus. Her sorrow turned to great joy. Amen. Sometimes we can be so sorrowful that we are spiritually blind. Our sorrow may come from the death of a loved one. It may be due to failure in school, ministry, or work. It could be because we are poor or sick. It could come from a painful relationship problem. Yet, the reason Jesus is right here with us, softly and tenderly, Jesus is calling. Amen. As we hear his voice, our soul returns to joy. Amen. Again, Jesus is right here with us. Softly and tenderly, Jesus is calling. Calling who? Calling who? He's calling me and you. As we hear his voice, our sorrow turns into joy. Upon recognizing Jesus, Mary fell at his feet and held them tight. Then Jesus said, Do not hold on to me, for I have not yet ascended to the Father. Go instead to my brothers and tell them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. According to verse 17, Jesus said nothing about his resurrection here, but mentions ascension twice. This is what his death and resurrection made possible. He, as he ascended, he would cross the chasm which separates heaven and earth, and he would sit at the right hand of, the, of God the Father. In doing so, he opened a new living way, a new and living way to God. Now, as we pray in Jesus' name, our prayers are carried straight to the heart of God. God has become our Father, and we are His children. Amen. Our Father hears us and pays attention to us. It pleases Him to answer our prayers and to bless and guide us. Through Jesus, anyone can come to God in prayer. Amen. Though Jesus appeared first to Mary, he was deeply concerned about his disciples. Jesus sent Mary to them as his messenger. She ran to them and exclaimed, I have seen the Lord. And she told them what she had said to, he had said to her. On the evening of that first day of the week, they were together with those locked for fear of the Jewish leaders. By following Jesus, they thought that any time they would be caught and be arrested as Jesus had been. They were paralyzed with fear. As Mary had a sorrow problem, the disciples had a fear problem. This fear was not just a psychological symptom. It came from the devil who holds the power of death and torments mankind in fear. According to Hebrews chapter 2, verse 14 through 15, we can understand them. Sometimes fear paralyzes us. Many very talented and able people are unable to do great things because of fear. How then did Jesus raise his disciples as his witnesses? Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Jesus gave them perfect peace that comes from being with God. It restored fellowship with God and brought his blessing to all aspects of their lives. This was made possible through Jesus' sacrificial death and resurrection. Jesus showed them his hands and sighed. 
they could see the nail marks and the spear wound with their own eyes. It was really Jesus. He had risen but his wounds testified to his love for them. His love and resurrection drove out their fear and they were filled with joy. According to verse 20. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. He had an important message for them. Jesus said, As the Father has sent me, I am sent you. The raising Jesus, King of Kings and Lord of Lords, gave them a submission that they had given him. It was to carry his gospel to a dying world. This would become the focus and purpose of their lives. Yet, how could they, when they are often weak and fearful? Jesus breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit filled them with courage, love, wisdom, and strength. He was given to help them proclaim the forgiveness of sins to the whole world. Anyone who believes the gospel will receive Jesus' forgiveness, yes, forgiving grace. But those who do not believe are not to receive his forgiveness. This is the universal, absolute truth for all people in the world. We who believe in the risen Jesus are called to share the message of forgiveness to a dying world. Again, we who believe in the risen Jesus are called to share the message of forgiveness to a dying world. We who, this is why we pray for one to one Bible studies and to raise disciples of Jesus among modern students. May the Holy Spirit help us to do so. Amen. In addition to serve and fear. Doubt is another tormenting problem for human beings. Thomas was a representative of doubting people. Thomas was absent when the risen Jesus first appeared to his disciples. They testified to him, we have seen the Lord. He should have accepted their testimony, seeing how joyful they were. But he said, unless I see the nail marks in his hands and put my finger where the nails were and put my head into his side, I will not believe. <laughs> A week later, his disciples were in the house again and Thomas was with them. The doors were locked. Like a contagious disease, Thomas doubting words had made everyone fearful again. So Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. He could have rebuked Thomas, saying, Why do you doubt all the time? But he graciously said, Put your finger here. See my hands. Reach out your hand and put it to my side. Stop doubting and believe. Jesus' words pierced Thomas' heart and helped him see who Jesus really is. Thomas confessed, My Lord and my God. His personal experience with Jesus made Thomas a man of conviction. Later he went to India as a missionary, where he died there as a martyr. Not only Thomas, but all the disciples went as missionaries, and all of them were martyred except John. Without resurrection faith, they could not have served God at the cost of their lives. Their faith testifies to us that Jesus is risen indeed. Third, blessings Jesus gives those who believe. Again, Blessings Jesus 
gives those who believe. First says 39 through 31. It is very important to accept the historical truth of Jesus' resurrection based on the Gospels. But this was just the beginning. Jesus' attention turned to those who believe in him through the disciples' testimony. Now, after briefly addressing Thomas, he speaks to us. Let's read verse 29. Can we read verse 29? Jesus told him, Because you have seen me, you have believed. Great are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Yes. Because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen me and yet have believed. Who are those? We are. Yes. We who believed and yet, who have not seen and yet have believed. Jesus meant, so you believe because you have seen with your own eyes. Even better blessings are in store for those who believe without seeing. That is me and you. Jesus said that we who believe without seeing are more blessed than Thomas. Amen. How can we believe? Mary's story shows that after Jesus' personal getting open, greeting open her spiritual eyes, Paul said that faith comes from hearing the message and the message is heard through the word of Christ. John Calvin said, faith is to close our heart through the word of Christ. Again, sorry. Faith is to close our eyes and give our attention to hearing. Apostle Peter told the early Christians, though you have not seen him, you love him. And even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and are filled with an inexpressible and glorious joy, for you are receiving the end result of your faith, the salvation of your souls. According to 1 Peter 1, verses 8 through 9. In verse 31, 30 through 31, John tells us of the blessing and believing in Jesus. He wrote, Jesus performed many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not recorded in this book. But these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Messiah and the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. Amen. In a word, the blessing is life. Here, Life refers to eternal life. Everyone longs for eternal life because God has set eternity in the human heart. To receive eternal life, our sin problem must be solved. Sin cuts us from God, who is the source of life. Because of this, we are miserable, regardless of how much money or power we have, or how famous we are. The wages of sin is death. We have to die. But God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son as Jesus as our ransom. Jesus paid the full price for sin through his death on the cross and rose again from the dead. We simply believe what Jesus has done for us. We cannot solve our own sin problem by doing good works or torturing ourselves. We just believe in Jesus. Amen. Jesus forgives all our sins and restores the relationship with God. Jesus becomes our Father. And we become His children who inherit His kingdom. We have deep peace with God and true joy in our souls. 
There is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Again, there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Conclusion 1. The reason Jesus gives joy to sorrowful people like Mary and me and you, right? Second, Jesus gives peace to fearful people like his disciples, again like me and you. Third, Jesus gives conviction to doubting people like Thomas and we all. The reason Jesus becomes to each of us my Lord and my God. Praise the risen Jesus. Okay. The risen Jesus becomes to each of us my Lord and my God. May we praise the risen Jesus. One word, we believe in the risen Jesus and we are more blessed. Again, all together, we believe in the risen Jesus and we are more blessed. Father Lord, we thank you. We thank you for dying for our sins and accepting to become our ransom. The Lord, we have seen that you raised from the dead and there is an empty tomb. Lord, as you appeared to Mary and you called her name, Mary, her eyes, her special eyes were opened even though she was full of sorrow because of not seeing you. Lord, she loved you but she had sorrow because she did not see you in the tomb. Lord, most of the times our problems cause us sorrow and our hearts are put in grief. Even though we love you, the Lord we have seen that when we believe in you, our sorrows you take, our fear you heal, Lord. May you heal every sorrowful heart that is here, Lord. May you conquer and overcome all the fear, Lord, by by coming to everyone's heart. Lord, the disciple had feared because he, they did not believe you were, with, you were with them. But Lord, once you appeared to them, Lord, their fear was conquered. And you gave them peace, Lord. We accept the peace that you also gave us, that we may overcome all the fear the fear for working for you, the fear for spreading the gospel, and the fear within our lives, Lord. Lord, you have, we have seen that you are the only one who can heal us from our doubts, who can overcome <coughs> our doubts in believing in you, Lord. Like Thomas, many times, we want evidences, even analysis from and biblical things and psychologies, but Lord, your word is truth. Teach us to rely on the word and believe in your word because we have seen that we are more blessed if we believe, Lord, without seeing. May you continue to bless us, Lord. Lord, heal our sorrows, overcome our fear and doubt so we can Take you as our Lord and our God. In your holy name we pray. Amen.